Hello, I'm Fred Schneider and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. In the aftermath of record-breaking snowstorms, the City would like to remind residents that a free community notification service called Nixel is available to residents. Using Nixel, the city sends text and email notifications to subscribers in a specific area, down to the quarter mile. While the system does not supply subscribers with warnings of extreme weather, the system will send notifications of interruptions to regular city services, such as boil orders, major road closures, and water main breaks. Individuals may register to receive community notifications by either texting their zip code to the number 888-777 or by visiting nixel.com. The City's Rich Knoll Pace Setter Award Review Board has awarded Vanessa Husky of the Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department with a February Pace Setter Award. The Rich Knoll Pace Setter Award program monthly recognizes city employees who are skilled in communication, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. I love what I do. I really enjoy working with the neighborhoods of Kansas City, Missouri. It's easy in, um, when you're working with good leaders, neighborhood leaders. And I like giving away city services. Thank you. <laughs> To learn more or to nominate an employee, visit kcmo.org slash paysetter. Now let's check in with some of our city departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you more news of upcoming shows, conferences, and conventions taking place at your city facilities. It's almost here. 500 of the world's newest, most stylish vehicles will be on display at the Greater Kansas City Auto Show, March 6th through the 10th at Bartle Hall. The shows featured cars, trucks, crossovers, SUVs, and minivans will cover more than eight football fields. For more information, visit KansasCityAutoShow.com. Bartle Hall will also serve as a location for the Greater Kansas City Home Show and Flower Lawn and Garden Show, March 22nd through the 24th. Residents interested in sprucing up their home or yard this spring are guaranteed to find many clever decorating, design, and remodeling ideas at this Kansas City tradition. In addition, attendees will also enjoy the entertainment stage, children's art activities, how-to demonstrations, and much more. Visit kchba.org or call 816-942-8800 for more information. The 2013 MIAA Basketball Tournament takes place March 7th through March 10th at the Municipal Auditorium. And the NAIA Division I Men's 2013 National Basketball Championship will take place March 13th through March 19th, also at Municipal Auditorium. To purchase tickets, visit Ticketmaster.com or go to the Municipal Auditorium box office. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. I'm Kevin LaPointe, the City Forester with the City of Kansas City, Missouri. And we're out here today on this beautiful day because we're out to talk about trees. Uh, in Kansas City, we've inherited uh, a wonderful heritage of trees throughout this uh, city. We have a great canopy of trees in an urban forest that we're proud of. And so we want to talk today about the Emerald Ash Borer. You may hear EAB, the acronym, being thrown around in the future. And we just want to talk about that to, to give an awareness to people of what Emerald Ash Borer is, what it can do, and what we can do uh, in response to it. Emerald Ash Borer came into the country about 2002 in the Great Lakes states around Michigan and it's spread throughout 17 states now in the northern part of the country and is now in Missouri as well. 
and we discovered it this summer in August within the city limits of Kansas City. And what emerald ash borer is, it's a small green beetle that was imported from Asia, came into the country. Because it has no natural predators in our country, it's just expanded and exploded in seven, now 17 states. It destroys only ash trees, so we only have to worry about ash trees. But it's destroyed millions of trees in the northern states already. And we have, just in the Kansas City city limits, about 400,000 ash trees that potentially could be killed. And now at this point in time, uh, the federal government, USDA, and the state has quarantined both Platte and Clay counties. We have not found it in Jackson County at this point. But that's important because the way EAB, EAB spreads within the country, uh, the way it spreads the easiest is through the transportation of firewood. And that's probably how it got here to begin with. So the, the message today is, first of all, what we can do as citizens and as residents is be very careful about transporting firewood of any kind. In the quarantine areas, you cannot transport any hardwood firewood at this time, not just ash. Even though, again, EAB, as the name says, only attacks ash trees. So what can we do about EAB now that we found it in Kansas City, both as a municipality, as a city, and as residents? Well, the first thing is to educate ourselves. We don't need to panic. We need to plan at this point in time. So get onto the EAB websites, the national site, www.emeraldashborer.info, and then the state website, which is www.eab.missouri.edu. And those websites have just all you need to know about emerald ash borer. Once we learn what we, everything we can about EAB, then we need to start looking and assessing our own properties. Do you have ash trees on your property? And you can call a lot of the local tree companies will come over and look at your trees and let you know what you have. And uh, they don't charge for those services typically. And they can also assess the health of your trees for you. If you're trying to find out if you have an ash tree on your property, you can take a look at the leaves. Ash trees are set up where you have a single leaf has five to nine leaflets. They look like individual leaves, but they're all attached to one, the same leaf petiole. The leaves are usually opposite, except for the terminal leaf at the end. And just like the leaves themselves, if you look, they're set up opposite one another, where you can see the new buds that have come on for next spring. And that's the way they're set on the tree, on the branches. The leaves are opposite from one another, five to nine leaflets on one leaf petiole. The leaves themselves tend to take on a spear-shaped kind of appearance, and they have sometimes either a smooth, or you can see on this one, a wavy or serrated edge to them. And that's how you can identify whether you have an ash tree. There are some similar trees, so if you're not sure, you can always ask a local arborist. They sometimes will come and just inspect your trees freely at no charge, and they can tell you for sure if you have an ash tree. The city is uh, here to help, and we're going to do everything we can to keep the information, good information, flowing to our citizens so that we can make informed decisions. We're planning right now, as I speak, on uh, northern dump sites that we can use once trees begin to die that have not been treated or cannot be treated, and we have to remove them, uh, both for our city trees, city street trees, as well as trees on your property. And we're going to try to make that available for the citizens, just like we do the local dump sites now. If you have an ash tree, don't go out and just remove it immediately, especially if that's not warranted. But think about where on your property can you plant a replacement tree and begin today. That's the most important thing. Even as we transition over the next five or 10 years, as emerald ash borer works its way through the city, as the population may explode at some point and then finally decline, we need to be planting now on trees that we can be putting on our properties to replace the ash trees. So right now at this time, stay informed, learn what you can, visit the websites, be watching Channel 2, be looking for our news releases and our media, visit our websites and learn everything you can about EAB. I'm here with Tom Noyes, U.S. Postal Inspector, and he's here today to talk with us about postal fraud, uh, specifically foreign lottery scams. Um, what does a postal inspector do? Postal inspectors are federal law enforcement officers and we are responsible for investigating crimes that violate the U.S. mail and the Postal Service and to protect customers throughout the United States. 
What is National Consumer Protection Week? Our goal during National Consumer Protection Week is to, along with our partners, is to educate the American public and specifically older Americans on how to protect themselves from fraudulent scams. And how do these types of scams, how do they work? How they work is an individual receive a phone call, an email, or a notice by mail, and that notice will tell the individual that they want a big prize. And with that big prize, all they have to do is wire money or send money through the U.S. mail. And that money, they will tell you, is for a fee, taxes, a miscellaneous expense. And with that, they ask for you to send your money in, and that is the scam because there is no prize. So if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. Absolutely, the old adage, yes. Very good. So if people um, are contacted regarding these types of scams, what should they do? Well, we have several uh, prevention tips, and it doesn't matter if you're younger, uh, older, or maybe you're even a caregiver of an elderly person. These tips are very useful to help prevent that. And these tips are to ignore all mail and phone solicitations for foreign lottery promotions. If you play a foreign lottery through the mail or over the phone, you may even be in violation of federal law. And something really important is to keep your credit card, bank account numbers to yourself. And if a caregiver, look for sudden bank account changes and disappearance of funds or valuable possessions. Great, thank you for taking the time to share with us today. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Looking ahead, the upcoming springtime curbside leaf and brush collection will occur the week of April 1st for residents in the city's central zone, the week of April 8th for residents in the south zone, and the week of April 15th for residents in the city's north zone. On their regularly scheduled trash day, residents may leave up to 20 sacks or bundles of leaves and brush at the curb for pickup. The city will host the 9th annual Bright Future Employment Fair on Saturday, April 20th from 8.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. at UMKC's Pearson Auditorium. Any Kansas City, Missouri resident age 16 or older who is interested in a paid summer internship may attend. Professional attire is required. To learn more information, please visit kcmo.org slash bright future. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.